In this video, I will show you how I built this inbox manager that actually sorts my emails with only one click. I just need to click on this workflow and then actually my email is successfully sorted inside the newsletter. Also, I will have for you the other version that actually sorts your old emails. So for an example, if you have the emails um, in the past, you can sort your entire inbox at once. Because let me tell you something, if you have an inbox that is loaded with many different emails as mine, so for an example, I've got um, over 3000 emails, sometimes it's really hard to sort actually and take these emails that are really important. So you know, I've got a lot of notifications, I've got a lot of newsletters, and there I can miss something out. That's why in this video, we'll build this entire project. I will give you the free JSON template and also we'll build it from scratch. So we'll see how it works. And again, with only one click, you can sort your entire inbox and also sort incoming emails whenever like you receive an email um, on your Gmail. And for the simplicity, I included all of the instructions along with the free template to download inside our 100% free community on school. So there uh, we've got our core students, there are other people interested in AI. So you can go over to the classroom and click on the inbox manager. So inside you've got the prompt, you've got the system message, also our um, template you can download um, right here. And when you do this, you can click on these three dots, import from file, and there pick your inbox manager. And inside actually you've got um, your um, automation already set up. So in general, again, um, yeah, go over here because we'll be using these instructions in this project. However, with all that being said, let's get started. Let me click on Ctrl Z and undo this entire action and create this project from start to finish. So first things first, we'll be using Gmail as a trigger. So on message received, whenever we've got a message, we would like to trigger this entire automation. And there, what we can do? We can choose um, actually the pull times. So as you can see here, we've got a mode, which is every minute. So every minute it checks for any emails we have, um, you know, inside our Gmail. However, I don't recommend this approach because in this case, you run out from your credits inside and I then very fast, okay? So for this purpose, I, will, I would like to um, trigger this automation every 15 minutes if we have the new message. So I can pick the custom and there we've got cron expression. For this case, we need to provide a specific code. If you're not familiar with the cron, um, you can go over for an example and type um, and then cron expression every 15 minutes, for an example. And there um, you've got cron guru, cron job every 15 minutes. And here you've got specified formats. Um, so we can just copy it, go over um, here, paste it there and it triggers every 15 minutes. Also there, you've got it explained how it works, so you can just read it. So in general, if you, for an example, want um, to run it every five minutes, just instead of 15, type five. Or just, you know, go over to ChatGPT and ask for the specific code, um, or just type inside, um, you know, type inside um, the Google. Um, I would like to trigger, um, you know, the automation with the cron every five minutes or, or so. Then um, it will give you the exact code. However, this is a quick notification. Also, as I see here, I forgot to uncheck the simplify button because what it does, it simplifies our email. However, for this case, for our A agent, we wanna have the entire email, all of the variables and so on. So we can disable that. And again, fetch test event. Also we'll have more, you know, more uh, variables to choose and it's nice. So again, what it does, we check every 15 minutes if we have the new email. The next step inside our automation will be to filter because we want to check if the email has already a label or not. Otherwise, if it has a label, like we don't want to process. Um, so in general, what we do, we go over to the value and there uh, we pick the labels um, zero here, this one variable, and we um, yeah check um, does not contain. So it does not contain the label, the word label. So we test the step and as you can see, item is kept and we don't have items discarded. Now we can go back to canvas and it's the time for our A agent that will manage all of the stuff. So in general, we'll do all of the things. Okay. 
And here, what we need to do, we need to provide the prompt. We can go over simply to our document here and copy this entire text. So here inside, we've got the topic, description, and sender. Um, so in general, we can go over there. Also, when it comes to the subject, um, let me show you. Um, here you've got the subject. So I dragged and dropped this entire um, variable for, um, let me delete it, for the text. Um, I have here, where do I have the text? I have here the text. So again, you can simply do this. Um, however, even you can copy that from, um, you know, from our community, um, from our free document. Um, nevertheless, um, it works by this way. So we've got, again, the topic description sender. And what we want to do, we want to add the system message. We want to actually define how this chatbot should behave. So also inside here, we've got our system message. And very shortly, I will explain what it does. So let's, um, yeah move to expression. So your role, you're an intelligent email assistant responsible for sorting incoming messages. Your task is to analyze the content, subject, and sender of each email and assign it to the appropriate category. Categories, categories for sorting. Priority, business, newsletter, administrative, personal notifications, and spam. You can change these categories, okay? You can provide your very own. I don't know. Um, I just thought like these categories will be proper. However, again, you can add some categories and later on, like, modify your entire automation. You can change the names. However, as usual, if you are building this automation together with me, I encourage you to actually do it firstly together with me and then change it. So firstly, you check if it works or not, and then you've got the, you know, point of view how it should work. Nevertheless, we've got the instructions for each email. Analyze the content, subject, and sender. Assign it to the appropriate category. Add a label with the category. If you're unsure, do not um, label the message. Response format, so we've got always return um, the result in JSON format. Um, so we just get only, you know, the category. And now what we can do, um, we can go over here and add the model. So let's go over back to Canvas. Um, I'm choosing OpenAI chat model, uh, which is GBT for Omini. It's cheap, it's good, <laughs> that's it, okay? Um, you can choose other models, you've got a lot of them. Um, you know, actually, we've got some problem for now, however, whatever. Um, yeah, I need to connect a um, different OpenAI account. Um, so here you've got, for an example, GPT-4, for um, 4.1 mini, Nano, which is pretty, you know, uh, pretty cheap, also cheaper than for Omini. However, um, yeah, pick your model. Additionally, for this agent, we need to go over there and require a specific output format. So we would like to provide the output parser. And why? Um, because we want to actually indicate the entire um, yeah, form of the response to make it even, um, yeah, to make it even more correct. For this case, from here, we need to provide this entire data. So let's copy it. And let's provide inside our output parser. That's correct. We've got output parser and their email label. So this will be the variable name. And in the variable, we should have the specific category. After we do this, for now, let's run it. So as you can notice, it chose the newsletter label for our email, which is pretty nice. We only wanted this word to return, okay? So decide which label it is. And even now, let me actually, um, yeah, change um, change the names of that. So here, label um, checker, rename it. Um, there, for an example, give a label. It's nice. And there is a time for the switch option that allows us to actually process with different actions based on, um, you know, the response from our model. So we choose the switch. And there, the value one is our email label. And we check if it's equal um, our categories we want to get. So firstly, we've got priority. Then what we do, we name output. And there, we name it as priority with big letter. We add routing rule. So there, again, we go over and uh, we provide email label. And then we check it for, um, there we've got personal. So here, personal, rename, rename output label, so personal, all right. Another road will be for notifications. So again, we take email label, notifications, notifications. 
And remember actually to type these um, names, actually these uh, words with small letters, um, because here we've got um, actually newsletter um, newsletters that start um, that starts with the small letter also is typed in this with the small letters. Um, so yeah, that's why we are using rename output um, variable to just provide big letters notifications. So now actually what I need to do, I need to fulfill, um, you know, provide other routing rules for, um, for other um, different labels. So here, when I open my system message, I've got um, newsletters, administrative, personal notifications, and spam. So I've done it. It looks like this. And what it does again, actually, whenever we have, for example, newsletters, um, yeah, here label, it goes with this specific path, so we've got newsletters. If the email is priority, it goes with this path and we just store this email in the priority label. And for each kind of road, um, we need to, uh, for each path, each road, we need to add um, the Gmail step. So in general, we need to add Gmail and we wanna add label to message. And here we just execute previous notes. So there, as you can notice, we don't have a message because our message was um, yeah, categorized to the newsletters. So let's go over here, pick again Gmail, add label to message, and there we've got the message ID. So for this case, we can scroll down or even collapse, for an example, this note, and there take the ID from the Gmail trigger. So we've got message ID, and here even we've got the problem. So for this case, what we can do to solve it, type first. So it takes the first message um, we have in, inside our inbox. And this often occurs when we have multiple items. So yeah, like if you have that on the red, highlighted on the red, um, just provide the first and it works. You actually indicate that, hey, take the first email um, from the inbox, the latest. And for that, so what we have, and we can rename it as the priority, priority, Okay, we can rename it and then choose the label, which is priority. Um, however, before, what's very important, we need to go over to our email. So let me go to my email. I used other email for this case. And there already I provided my labels. So I've got administrative, business, newsletter, notifications, personal, priority. And uh, when I was creating this automation for you. However, if you want to add the label, click here and add it. Um, so there, for an example, let's say, um, I don't know, health. <laughs> it's not related, however, you know, that's how you add um, the label. Uh, when you add your labels, you go, you go over there and choose, we've got the priority, you choose priority. We test the step and it should be classified um, to our priority, so it worked for sure. And we need to do the stuff for all of the, um, you know, for all of the, for all of the paths. So what we can do, we can click here, click Ctrl D to duplicate, and just provide all of the nodes for each path. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven um, different labels. So we've got um, actually six items. Let's provide another one. Uh, okay. And as you could notice here inside our Gmail, we don't have there in the labels the spam. And this is why um, actually it's due to we have the spam already inside our inbox. So we haven't provided the label, uh, which is spam, yeah, right there. We'll be using this spam, um, yeah, label. For this case, what I can do, I can simply connect all of these um, to my automation, change the name, actually, let, let me go over here. I can change the name, so firstly, we've got uh, what we firstly had, let's see. Uh, firstly, we had um, the pri priority, this is the priority, okay? So we've got the priority, Let's rename it. Actually, we need to firstly, um, yeah, this one changed to the newsletter. Um, yeah, so actually it's, um, you need to do it by this way, newsletters. However, afterwards, and uh, when it's set up, um, you can use it for a long time. So we've got priority. There you can see you've got, you've got message ID that is proper. There you can't choose it because it didn't choose this path. It wasn't the priority message, so we only have the data inside the newsletters. However, we copied this um, yeah, note, so now we can um, use the variable right there. And only what we need to do is to change the label. So here we have the priority. 
um, there in the newsletters, uh, we had um, right there um, the priority. However, we have the newsletter right there. What we have, um, this is the personal. So we can rename it as personal. Very short, very simply, personal. Okay. And there, just change the label to personal. It's simple as that. So we have personal. So now let me change all of these. So this is how you create the entire automation to sort your emails into specific labels. And I think it's really useful. A lot of us have like mess inside our inbox, for sure me. So yeah, that's how it works. And with this single kind of automation, you can sort your emails. However, I said at the beginning and I showed the other automation that sorts your old inbox and old messages. And in general, it's pretty straightforward to create because what you do, you copy all of these steps, so all of these nodes, and then only what you do, you, you provide the trigger, which is different, which is on click. Um, you get messages from the Gmail, so let me show you how it looks like. Also remember, um, you can download the full template. So here you will be able to see how it works. Um, you know, you can just set it up by this way. Nevertheless, let me guide you through that very quickly. So in general, inside the Gmail, we get many emails. The limit is 15. So at the like at once we get 15 emails. And then what we do, we provide the filter. And again, we check if the email has, has already a label or not. And now let me show you how it works. So in my account, I have like these numbers. So in the newsletter, I've got five um, emails. In the notifications, I've got nine. In the priority, I've got one. Um, however, if I click, uh, let me go over here. If I click on test workflow, now it takes 15 emails and it will sort everything. When I zoom up, you can see like, we've got five items already um, given like the category for them, 10, 11. So just it, it, it creates 15 different, um, you know, categories. It sorts our emails into 15 different labels. So as you can see, we've got 13 um, notifications and two newsletter. So let's check it. Let's go over here. Let's refresh the page. And that we have it. We've got notifications, newsletter. So this automation works. And in general, feel free to change actually the amount of, um, yeah, of getting the emails. You can actually, I don't know, modify it to 100 for 120. Remember, it will take more time. Nevertheless, you've got more items, you know, like sorted at once. So for an example, let me pick 50 for now and let's see how it works. So test workflow. So it takes 50 latest emails for us. Um, and yeah, our um, chat, so our A agent will sort everything up. And I think it's great automation. For me, it's really worth to use because for an example, like here in one click, you can sort your entire inbox. Uh, for now, thank you for watching this material. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video.